on this cookie. Uh, Very good. There it is. Okay. Well, now if if you want, I'll tell you how to find the uh, host key. If yes. You, send me an email, please. Okay. Yes. Will do. Jay Stamp. Uh, Jay Stamp. Send it in the text box. It's in the text box. I went and looked it up. There's something in the text box about it. Right. You look in the profile. And then you log down, and just below where it lists the password, it shows you what the host key is. Yeah, I sent you a chat. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Ah. Okay, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, by the way, I can't in. see anything in the chat if I haven't opened it up before you uh, sent it. So anyway send me an email please jstanfell at gmail.com you are on uh john berrien yeah it says host disabled participant screen sharing john i gotta make you a co-host let's see one more, more participants berrien Make a co-host. Yes. Okay. Now you're. Now you're. See, now he's a co-host. I see it. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Here we go. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do we move this down the bottom? The, uh, ah, that's okay. Never mind. Never mind. So, um, was everybody here for last? Uh, except on it was no, here for last no. Week? Okay. Um, should we go through reading the puzzles again, or should we just go to the database? Well, let's see. Andy was here. Henry was not. Anya is familiar, but she's not familiar with access. So let's show the access database that we're working with and tell her how we got the information that they have into the access database. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Well, as, as I'm sure you know that that uh, there we could download that as a CSV file, so which because that was actually in in the uh, in the puzzle description. So I did that, and and then I uh, I, I imported the. Uh, Are you familiar at all with Access, Anya? No, but I I am I'm familiar with Excel, not with Access. Completely okay. different things. So okay. access, <laughs> access is a database. Access has tables. Right. The original puzzle looked like it came from an access database or some database because they exported four tables into four CSV files. Yeah. And when you when you use access, you can import those right. CSV files directly right. and create tables. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I don't remember. I don't remember where I put them, but let's. Oh, by the way, you if you're, you know, you can zoom by using your view options and changing the zoom ratio so that you can see this better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't remember where I put the, the Excel files, but. You mean but, the, C, uh, the CSV files? Yeah, I don't know, remember where I put them. I wasn't ready for that. So there are CSV John, files. I think, John, I think you just had it there, but you were you were looking for access files. You have to change your file type. Go back yeah. to where you were. It's, it's it's NOAA S. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, NOAA CSV, but y yeah, yeah, but that's the, the file. Type. Well, okay. The file type. Okay, we can do that. File type was Access Database. 
Um, yeah, here's, yeah, there it is. Noah's yeah, here's, and then right, the four here's, Noah here's, files. Yeah, here's the or Excel files. Right. Right. This is the customer file. This is the customer file. So that that's what it looks like in Access. And no, you, this, can, this can, is actually can, excuse office. me in Excel. Can yeah. Access import an XLS? Yeah. X file. This, yeah, wait a minute. This, this is the orders file. And, and anyway, yeah, this is what it looks like. And and we could import that into Excel. I mean access. So let, let me just close that. And uh let's see. Let's go to access. And it's uh yeah, yeah. to access yeah and documents and let's go down okay it's already in there but anyway we can do that i'll I'll just change the name although no the the point here is just to show anya how we got it into access yeah right you don't need so, to do it again because you have the tables yeah so we just do that, imports into a new table, and it asks you a few questions. These are big tables. Oh, we had an error, not responding. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, and you can see first row is the column headings, which would become the uh, the, the field names in the database. And uh, let's see, this was the, if I remember right, yeah, this is the orders table. Uh, in, in access, you use key fields to join the tables together. And in this case, it's the order ID, and it cannot have duplicates. Uh, and I know that this one doesn't, so that would work. But I know that the customers one had one duplicate there were two records or two i guess rows in excel that were duplicates and that wouldn't create uh a key so i had to find that and delete the this the second one so we only had one and then it, then it came down right with key fields um so i know that's probably clear as mud but uh, let's see if we can go to the next one. Yeah. And uh, let's see. It's asking data type. And uh, this would have to be integer. You, you do have to, and, and it has to be no duplicates. And that's for this one. You can go on through them all. Let's do the next one. Yeah, this this one is a customer ID, and there definitely would be duplicates in there for the orders. Uh, and I would probably make that an integer because it's got to match. It's got to match the uh, the key field in the customer table. And then these are text, text, and this is. You can leave whatever you want. Can't be integer. We'll leave it there. Uh, and so then you could hit next and i would make the key the order id which is what's going to happen when you see the table and then i think nets is going to ask me to do it and uh yeah i could just do noah's orders one and we'll do it but you already have a database yeah but i it's a new name so it's okay And so now we have, we should have, it's still working on it. Uh -huh. There's a lot of data. Okay. Must, be a big, must be a big table you're bringing in. Huh. There must have been a blank key 
a blank order number. <laughs> That's interesting. All right. And this just lets you save the import steps if you're going to do the same thing with the same file later. Mm -hmm. So now we have Noah's orders one. And there must be a blank somewhere in here. Uh, we could do we could do a, uh, a find. If anybody think it'll take a null or just do a blank? I think it's going to have to. Yeah. And then blank is a null. Yeah, there it is. There's a whole bunch of things with, wow. Oh. Wow, we didn't find this last time. It's super weird. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. Well, you started with the CSV. You didn't work with you didn't work with LibreOffice last time. Uh, no, I did. I, I don't use Excel. I use LibreOffice Calc. But you started with the CSV files. You I started believe. with the CSV files, didn't you, John? Uh, no, it was an Excel. Oh, I'm going to see if one or the other has nulls in them. That, yeah. that, that, that might be see. a bug. Let me see. Uh, let, let me just close that. And let's go here to the one that I did before. And, uh, and let's see if that has nulls. Wow, it would have given you an, an error. Come on. Come on. Come on. What are you doing to me? Okay. Oh, Okay. Now, for some reason, this one has no nulls in it. So that, that's good. This is down the bottom. You can see there's 214,207 records in here. That would be the number of rows in the Excel file. Would you check the Excel file and see if it has that number? Uh, yeah. Because that would really change things if we... CSV does not have a no. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to search in Excel. You're not going to search. Can I search for nulls in, this, in a column? And, and interestingly, where did you get the Excel files? Uh, it um, came from the CSV file. Oh. Yeah. If you, if you just select the uh, A1 field. Yeah. And now scroll to the bottom. Just hit the end key, it'll go there. Now he's in LibreOffice. 214,208. Yeah. And, and every one has an order ID. No nulls. And he had 214, 207, I thought, in, uh, in, in data and in access. There it is. 215, 207. I think that matched the, the uh, yes, access. It looks like there's one extra. No, it's your row headings. That's right, because there's 1,001. You're right. It starts with 1,001. So this is right. This is correct. That matches. The matches your, you go to your access time. down there. Click on your access database down the, down on your task bar and see what that number was. There it is. Yeah, One, 214, 214, yeah. It, they match. They match. So you, you had 215 something. Oh, but that's because. 215, 208. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, let's let's go back here. You had a thousand more records. Uh, well, that's because the first record is 1001. Oh, 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 I see. So it's this the number on the left. Right. 214, right. 208. This is the number of. So something got messed up in your Libra office calc spreadsheet that you ended up with no records there. Well, at least that, there was something wrong in there. Let's let's not worry about it, John. No. I don't think it matters. So let's, we're going to use this database. Right, which is the one we were using. Yeah. Okay. So let's now, get out of this. Maybe Anya can help us with the number three hint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because um, we can, and, and we can use that to create this the the query in Excel in Access in Access to get the answer to number three. I thought we had the answer to number three. Oh, uh, I thought it was number four. John, if yes. I can suggest, just so Anya has an idea of where we're going, if you could just go into the table relationships. Yes, I was thinking that too. And give her an idea of, okay, she knows the table, she knows the CSV files, but show how you related them in the database, because that'll all come to bear when right. you're running the queries. Right, right. let's do that. Database tool. Okay. Okay. So there's, there are four, I guess you started off with spreadsheets that became CSV files and then we made them tables. You can take screenshots if you want, if you know how to do screenshots. And, and these are, you uh, drew relationships between them. Right. This is a one customer has many orders. That's what that says. One to many. One order can have many items. And then this is the products, which could be on many orders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and in, in access, this is called a junction table because we have a many to many relationship between products and orders. Mm -hmm. And so that allows that. And and these little key symbols, these are the key fields here. Usually, most of the time, there's only one. Mm -hmm. um, and the values in the key field have to be unique. Okay. Uh, so that, that things, nothing is duplicated. Let's put it that way. And actually, in the data you had, nothing was duplicated except for that one uh, customer was twice in the customer table, which didn't allow a uh, uh, a key field to be made from the customer ID. Mm -hmm. So and so, it, just a matter of we I did a quick search for duplicates, and it came up with a duplicate for whatever number the it was, and I deleted one because they were every all the data was duplicated. I just deleted one and then everything was great and I could make the key. Uh, so that's that's how things work in access. Uh, so you build this table, these tables and the relationships and you're able to ask questions then across them. And so over on the left under the queries, you yeah. can see that there is the query for puzzle one. Right. Yeah, let, let me bring that up. I'll, I'll just close this. Okay, and let me let me close this. Okay, so this, well, this was the result we got from the query. But let me show you the query. And it has the customer's table because we were looking for the phone number for the person who had the letters in the last name matched the numbers in their phone number, where uh, mm -hmm. you know two is ABC, three is DEF, and 
I, I, I cheated and and put it on paper. So and so we have what we have here is the name, the phone number, and you know, not knowing any better, I said, okay, the last 10 digits of the name on the right is what we're looking for because there's 10 digits in the phone number. And it can't include a space anywhere in that. And then we know that zero and one have no letters in a phone number. So that's what this is. This, these are the uh, filtering criteria to to get us from the something like eleven thousand customers down to the result, which hey, is John? yes. John, just just a quickie. Could you go into the uh, SQL view on that just to show Anya? Oh so sure. She's with Python. It, it might look a little bit more familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I I only know how to use the uh, uh, the other way. But it's the same result. So so anyway, there's that, and then uh, and then the data sheet view gives us the results. And so th there's probably a way to use some programming to figure out matching the letters to the numbers, but there was only 15 results. You see in the bottom, there's only 15. And so the first thing I did was I said lots of names with N, and N is a six. And so were there any phone numbers that ended with a six? And there weren't any. So I knew it couldn't be anybody with an N as a last. An M is also a six. So there's no, well, no sixes again. So it could be this one, Villarreal. Could be Gutenberg. It could be Strickland and or Fitzgerald. There's only four names that didn't have M or N. So then I just started with, okay, what matches? And it turned out the Gutenberg is a four, a four. The R is a seven. And I just worked from right to left. And this was the phone number. So it was easy enough with only 15 choices. Uh, I don't know how to do it with. Uh, programming yeah yeah that's clever yeah i, I did you, you could have added you could have added another condition that said the last digit can't be a six the same way that you said it couldn't be a zero six well, that's seven. true that's true and then you would have limited it down to four and yeah okay let's let's do that let's do that well, just to show how it's done uh john yes um, a lot of times, if we were trying to narrow things down like that, stick with use your use your query one that you have right there as the source for a query one a. Okay. So you can just close that up and then create a new query. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to use query one right and the and name with name and phone and uh i guess we don't need that anymore go ahead okay but the name uh the name could oh yeah it has to be in... the last 10 letters yeah it has okay to the, be... last, the last 10 the last 10 couldn't be anything n so uh, not like star N. Uh, wait a minute, it's quote star N. Quote star. Does this support N. brackets? So you can put M and N in there? 
Well, he could put an or. Yeah, well, does it support try brackets? That, try that first. Just use that and, and see what you come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and okay. we can get rid of the M's too the same way. Right, just go back and design it. Design. Yeah. I think it's got to be an or. But, uh, no, that didn't work. I guess it's got to be an and. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, so that made it a lot easier. And a D is definitely not an eight. A D is a two, three. And uh, so then we're down to two. An L is a five. So that doesn't work. So and this Gutenberg is so Gutenberg was the right one. Not like D and not like L. So I don't know how this. Uh, Visi Data, is that the name of the program, Anya? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this gives you another way of getting at this stuff. And it's very fast, and uh, and you can do it with a little bit of learning using point and click stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Is it? Am I right that? This is called query by example, or is that is that the wrong terminology? I guess it must be. Anyway, it's it's a visual way of seeing the query. I, I find it well. I'm used to it, so it's readable. So then we got down to uh, query three, and you yeah. say that we got the answer there. Somehow, I think so. Let, let me just. I'm not going to save this. Okay. Okay, let's do the second one. And the second one, I don't, I don't remember. Let's see. Oh, this was to find the uh, a person with the initials JD and 2017 had a, was in there too, and uh, and they, they were having coffee. So we we look for the order year. And uh, the first initial of the first name. We didn't try to separate the name to get the D. And then uh, they were having coffee. So that, and that, as you can see, we needed all the entire thing because the products are over here. So they all had to be linked through the relationship. Uh, you know, that linked the customer to the pivot order and all the way over to the, the products. So anyway, let's uh, let's see what the data sheet field came. And uh, his people had coffee, but there was only one with the initials of JD. And so that was the answer. Everybody okay with that? <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's see what we did on the third. I thought we solved that. I don't. I don't remember what the third. Oh yeah, this was the one. This was the one. Yeah, I have. I have it in front of me. I already had a fear of spiders before this, but this spider was so realistic, and I had a hard time. Can you find the phone number of the person that the contractor gave the rug to? because the contractor had given the rug away because it wasn't claimed. At last, I couldn't deal with the rug taking up my whole bathtub. So I gave it to this guy who lived in my neighborhood. He said he was naturally assertive because he was an Aries born in the year of the dog, right? So we had to look up in Chinese what the year of the dog was that, that fit. And there were like four or six years of the dog that could have been this person so maybe he was able to claim it i don't remember his name last time i saw him he was leaving the subway and carrying a bag from noah's 
I swore I saw a spider on his hat. Can you find the, num the number of the person that the contractor gave the rug to? So he was an Aries born in the year of the dog and he made a purchase. Right. So we had to look up the year. Right. Well, there were a bunch of choices for the year of the dog. And then we had to put in something then, that made him then, an Aries. Right. And then the month uh, between uh, March 21st and April 19th for Aries. And, uh, and I think that only came up with one result. Yeah, one result. And and that was right. Oh. Cool. And that was right. Let me write that down. Five one six six three six seven three nine seven. Right. I I guess you're doing the puzzles, John. I got that one in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Anyway, so that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. The only problem I had, there's one other thing. It used, it, 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 they lived in the same neighborhood or whatever it was as the person we found in the second puzzle. And I, I wasn't, I, I didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. And so I went online and cheated and I looked it up. And I have the guy with all the answers on my desktop. And uh, and he said, use the zip code for the guy that in the previous puzzle. And that's where the 11420 came from. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I wasn't, just, I wasn't good enough at puzzles to figure that out. But once I put that in, that was it. I think cheating is a valid puzzle approach. Well, yeah. It, you know, I was more into figuring out a query to get the answer. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I think I got an answer without that zip code that only was one person. But of course, it didn't work. The phone number was wrong, uh, which was kind of frustrating. But anyway. Uh, that there's the answer. And and run it. Data sheet view gives you. And there it is. And and that was him. Okay, so let's go to the fourth one. But wait, that's the same answer you had before for the last one. No, no, the the last one is this one. Three for number three. That, right, that is. Yeah. This is the third puzzle oh. query oh, for the third oh, okay. puzzle. Okay. Uh, oh, so then the number four is the bicycle fixer. Right. Right. And uh, let me go to design to you. Yeah. I didn't figure that out either. And I cheated. Uh, again. Uh, so this had this had quite a few things. Remember, we were trying to figure out. Uh, we knew it was 2017. That made sense, and uh, we were trying to figure out the time. It had to be before five o'clock, because the lady showed up. I think at five. It was after five a.m. Okay. So oh, she bought. Had... Oh yeah. So the the order was before five a.m. Yeah. Now, yeah. how did Tinder fit in? It didn't. It didn't. So we don't know the answer to this one, do we? Uh, actually, we do. Oh. Actually, this, this gives us the answer. Um, it was because she, uh, she got pastries all the time. It'll be easier if you show the SQL and, and you can send us doing it like that. If you, if you show the SQL, it's it easier to understand. Well, I don't know. 
Well, you'd have to put it in a better, you'd have to format it, yeah, to see it. So this is just yeah. showing you this. So you really have to format it to really get it better um, because you're doing a whole bunch of stuff there on inner joins and are you doing an outer join too? I can't see there's an outer join here too. Uh, there's two inners. Yeah. Three inners. This is a little hard to read. You need to reform yeah. that. So yeah. that's a little more say, that's a reformat it to, to do that. Yeah. To, uh, to, I mean, to I'm used to doing it this way. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there was two things that I found out afterwards. Uh, one was um, the the products, the SQU, the guy said, use BKY because it's the bakery. He noticed all of the items that were, you know, um, uh, whatever they called it in the, in the name, uh, uh, you know, pastries, but had a bakery BKY in the SKU. So he, so he said that. Uh, so I did that. And that got us this one answer. Now I didn't try this uh, to get to the fifth puzzle. I just assumed this was right. I, I didn't do anything till today because I wanted to save that for today. But um, but it gave. Gave uh, gave the right answer. We think. I think there's only one way to know. And uh, sh shall we go put this phone number in? I'm doing that right now. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. Nine uh -huh. nine two nine five one eight seven two six nine. Yes. That doesn't seem right. Okay, let me, let me show you, let me show you what. Um, Are we missing something there on you? I don't know. Okay, here's, here's the guy I found, puzzle one, and he wrote this Java, which was Greek to me, uh, to solve it. And, uh, and then he's a link to puzzle two. He did that. Uh, and uh, and he looked for someone that bought rug cleaner. And there was only one record uh, for for rug cleaner in the whole thing. I found I found that too, uh, but I I didn't use it. And and then puzzle three. Living in the same neighborhood as the, the zip code from the previous result, which is what I didn't catch. We knew the Aries sign and the year of the dog. And uh, so we got that. Now, puzzle four. He said, personal, and, and I didn't try this, personal living in New York. That seemed like everybody, ordinarily multiple times and buy his pastry. So it's multiple times. Yeah. So he used he used BKY for bakery to find it. Um, and you know he doesn't tell you what it is. He just says it's the right person. <laughs> and it said ordered 10 times. So let's uh let's go back here. Um... Oh. Why, yeah. why do you have ordered in 2017? Uh actually. Maybe that was the problem. Let's, let's take that out. Because I thought I got 10 times. Let's try it well, again. You could just uncheck the box, right? Well, well no, that just know. wouldn't show it. It just oh, okay. doesn't show it. I think it. I got it. Yeah, show. 
Yeah. Okay. It must be Booker. Because there's, yeah, there's 11 records and 10 of them are Booker. You got to try that one, John? Yeah, I'm writing it down. Mine, I was three to six. 718-649-9036. Got it. Another, okay. can another candle is lit. <laughs> Okay. Good. Oh, and, and I see how you get to the next question is by clicking on the number of the candle in that. Uh, that's it. I, I, I thought it. I thought it was down the bottom that you could go to the next puzzle. I don't see that, but if I click on the number of the candle, which in this case is five, it brings up puzzle five. Okay. Yes, I did have that tapestry for a little bit. I even cleaned the blotchy section that turned out to be a friendly koala. What's the phone number of the women from Free Cycle? That's. Is that all it says? No, I'll read the whole thing. Yes, I did have that tapestry for a little bit. I even cleaned a blotchy section that turned out to be a friendly koala, but it was still really dirty. So when I was going through a Marie Kondo phase, I decided it wasn't sparking joy anymore. I listed it on Free Cycle. That's a place where people give away stuff, recycling it. And a woman in Queens Village came to pick it up. She was wearing a Noah's Market sweatshirt, so we know she's in Noah's Market, and it was just covered in cat hair. Ah, so she buys cat stuff. When I suggested that a clutter of cats might ruin such a fine tapestry, she looked at me funny and said she only had 10 or 11 cats and they were getting quite old and had cataracts now so they probably wouldn't notice some old rug anyway. It took her 20 minutes to stuff the tapestry into some plastic bags she brought because it was raining. I spent the evening cleaning my apartment. What's the phone number of the woman from Free Cycle? So okay. what, we know, what we know about her is she buys from Noah's Market. She lives in Queens Village and she has Lots of cats. Okay. So let's, let's, yeah, I'm going to customers, orders, order items, and products. Okay. This, this is really slick. Just, just clicking to add all these relationships and joins and then having yeah. the query being so yeah. visible. And there's two things in this list that are not. They're, they're garbage. Let, let me just get rid of this. Delete. And he orders one, which is somehow screwed up. Okay, so these are, these are the actual tables and we don't need the duplicates. By the way, that was how I found the duplicates. You can do a duplicates query to find duplicates in a uh, table or a field. I'll get rid of that too. No, leave it there for now. We may okay. we may need that for something. Okay. Okay. So, so we've got a new query. New query. So we know we need the name and the phone number. Right? Yeah. Okay. And there's no date and time stuff involved, right? Well, we know something about this because it's after some other thing. What do we know from a previous, I mean, we might know from a previous thing, but it won't make too much difference because she's been buying for her cats for years. 
Okay. So we, we probably need, yeah, let's, let's use the SKU again and let's use the description. Uh, and let's, let's just see what that gives us. That's going to be a lot. Well, put in a limiter yeah. on the description that has the word cat in it. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's sort this. Okay. Let's see if this we got anything with cat. Well, you can filter. Never yeah, going to have right. to go through 427,000. Yeah, you're right. All right. <laughs> Text filters. I, I don't know that I can filter on that now that I've sorted it. Oh, here it is. No. No. That's not going to work. Now, over in. The... Yeah, I can't. Where's. Where's the find? Hmm. In the SKU, there was a text filter. Oh. I don't see that. You, you need the down arrow, because it was there before. Yeah, I saw it too. There it is, right there. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, what do you want? Begins with? Contains. Contains. C-A-T. Okay. I think it was K-I-T. No, that's not right. I think it was K-I-T. You need the down arrow, not if you click in the in the name, you get that. If you click on the down arrow. Yeah, but it doesn't have an arrow anymore because it's filtered. Control Z. <laughs> okay. Okay. Working. So right. in the down arrow in the description. Yeah, let's try that. Put cat in there. There's something that says contains cat. That's what we used. It's getting to the filter field. I don't know. It's giving me trouble. Why don't we just do this simply with it as a, as a query? Really? You know, it's got so much data in here. There's 395,000 rec records. I think that's why it's so slow. Are you trying to find one record down? Or... We're trying to find things with cat. Come on. How about how about clicking on the on the filter thing up there in the, up above in the uh, ribbon? See what says filter. Oh yeah. How about that? Yeah. I don't think uh, selection. No, it's just. Your machine is slow for some reason. I think that's because there's so many records here. Maybe. I think I got 16 gigs in this. Maybe it's not enough. John. Yes. If you go in, if you go into the, the design view on your query. Yeah. Just go into the design view. Yeah, well, I'm clicking here and it it, it just pops and disappears. Catch up. Okay. Design view. All right. 
Okay, oh. now in the upper part of the window, just go to a blank area in the upper part of the window, right mouse click. Okay. And go to properties. We get a pop up window, properties. Come on. Try it again, right mouse and click properties. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Now over on the re halfway down, record set type. Yes. Change that from Dynaset to Snapshot. Okay. Because you're not updating any records anyway. Okay. Okay. That should speed up your query. Okay. But why don't we just put in like cat here? You can do that too. Like star, cat star. Double star. quote. Uh, star. Okay, let's try that. Okay, there's lots of cats. Oh, I see it's pet. Now, is there a way to get rid of females from the name? Uh, get rid of what? We know it's a female. And we know she lives in Queens Village. Yeah, but looking at a name, that could be misleading. Well, let's use Queens Village. Okay, so we have to add, a, add some fields. I just have to look up the zip code for Queens Village. Uh, well, city state zip ought to do it. And why don't we do like Queens? Yeah. You don't need a star at the front. It'll be at the very yeah, beginning. Yeah. Uh, no. Queens star. Space star. Don't need the space. All right. Anita, oh, Anita, Anita Cook, Anita Koch. Yeah, look at that. I'll try that. You try that? 315. Okay. I got 315. 492. 492, 7411. Yep, that was it. I'll be darned. Yes, because cat was in the middle there. You see, it says dry senior cat food. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of senior cat food yeah. and adult <laughs> cat food. All we needed was cat and queens. Yeah. Ah. And once, so that was another good trick of using the snapshot because we weren't updating the database. Right. So that made everything very yeah, much faster. Yeah, yes. It's not holding the records open there to be updated. Thanks, Andy. Okay. Three to go. So we're on number six. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, puzzle six. Why, yes. So we must be talking to Anita Koch. Why, yes, I did have that rug for a little while in my living room. My cats can't see a thing, but they sure chased after that, the squirrel on it, like it was dancing in front of their noses. It was a nice rug, and they surely, and they were surely going to ruin it. So I gave it to my cousin, who was moving into a new place that had wood floors. She refused to buy a new rug for herself. She said they were way too expensive. She's always been very frugal and she clips every coupon and shops every sale at Noah's market. In fact, I like to tease her that Noah actually loses money whenever she comes in the store. 
I think she's been taking it too far lately though. Once the subway fare increased, she stopped coming to visit me and she's really slow to respond to my texts. I hope she remembers to invite me to the family's reunion next year. Can you find her cousin's phone number? God, is there anything in there that helps? <laughs> is there anything in the database about coupons or discounts? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, let's see. You had put in price and current price. Yeah, let, let's, well, wait a minute. Let's, let's just close that. Let's just go to, uh, let's go create a query and we can put all four of these in and look for anything that wholesale cost, wholesale cost. That I would think Noah would not sell below wholesale cost. So but he loses money. Well, I'm I'm just thinking that We're greater than all you got the you got the unit price, which is what people are use, usually paying. Uh but I was wondering maybe we should be looking for uh where the wholesale cost and the unit price match. In other words, they're getting a the deal. Yeah, that's that's too close. Did he did they ever tell us earlier how much profit Noah makes? No. Not that I recall. But she shops every sale at Noah's. Yeah. Uh Let's see. We didn't say anything about what she buys there. No. Um, I I can give the hint that it is it is comparing um unit price to wholesale cost. Um, I do know I do know for example that um some the store that my mother ran at would sell milk at a loss to bring people in to buy milk. And then they would also buy other stuff while they were there. Um, yeah. So, so it is comparing I, those two. Yeah. I wonder if we should be looking at equals less than or equals. Then. Yeah. Why don't we try that? Okay. So let's do, I think we always have to do name and we always have to do phone number. Um, uh, and then Let's see. Let's do. Let's do description. Yeah, let's do SKU two, and then. Uh, let's see. Well, let's do this and this, just for the heck of it. Now. Then you create an expression between. Uh... Yeah. Unit price and wholesale price. Right. Yeah. We got uh, sale. Let's do sale. And I do criterion. Unit price. Is it uh, underscore? is less less than or equal to wholesale cost. Is, is, is no, what no, you do on the sales price, you do a subtraction. And then on your on your criteria is either less than zero or greater than zero. Yeah. Oh I see it, well, well unit let's... price unit price minus wholesale cost is less than like Henry said and then like Henry said on the criteria would be greater than greater than uh, one you would need a positive number all right so we have... less, less than one would would be a negative that's that would show you your loss leaders uh, okay so what do you want to get units price minus unit price minus wholesale cost
Okay. And then the, okay. the uh, right. And then the, uh, and then the criteria. The, uh, what are we looking be, for here, Andy? Well, if you want to see the loss leaders, it would be where the unit price is less than the wholesale cost. So the form, it would be less than zero. You'd be looking less, at a less than or number. equal to zero. Right. Well, less than zero. Less than or equal. Doesn't yeah, less than or anything. equal. Yeah. Oops. Equal. Well, if it's equal, it's not a loss leader. It could be. Yeah, yeah. but it's it's still a great sale. Right. Okay. Okay, let's see what that does. Yeah, we're going to have to, uh, let, let me do something here. Uh, let's make uh, three decimal places. Oh, what is that? Holy crap. Mm. Go, to the, go for the different format, John. You know, give it a monetary format. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Let's do uh, currency, 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 currency. Okay, yeah. And two decimal places. No, you can have three. That's okay. Yeah, three's all right. Okay, we still have 2,700 records. Wow. So we need more than that. Well, sort the names. Yeah. I'll do it in your query. You don't want to do. Yeah, you're right. We need, we'll do it in the query. Yeah. Right. And again, John, try this. Go to the properties. Turn it into a di into a snapshot rather than a dataset. Oops, wrong place. Okay. Now we need a woman who shops every sale. You know, I, I think there's too many records here. We got to filter it some more. If, if you put in her address, because now she's moving. And she would be one of the only people who has the same name and two addresses. Okay. All right. I'll put in address. Uh, probably just the city and state. Oh, well, you want to use both? Yeah, why not? You still got to look through a lot of records here. I wish there was an easy way to get rid of the female, the males, you know? Yeah. That's a pretty sexist comment, John. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, John B., what, yeah. about, what about doing a descending sort on the sale column? Looking for the biggest, looking for the biggest loss leader. You know, because okay, that's a that's a good idea. All right, let's 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 take this out. And well, it's, that may still be useful. It doesn't cost you anything. Well, descending, right? Descending, yes. yes. See, and that's why, yeah. That's why, I, that's why I wouldn't put equal zero. Get rid of the equal. You're looking for less than zero. Well, how many? Oh, it's still twenty six ninety. We didn't get it. We didn't reduce it. No, that's not. You don't need the equal in there. Okay. It's only going to take a couple of dozen records at at best. Yeah. 
I think it helps to sort them by name. Yeah. I think you're right. Let, let's see how it works. Yeah, but now you're going to have it sorted by name and then. And yeah, then I agree with that. You're right. So put the put the name sort at the end. Yeah. Where you're seeing the you're seeing the, the wholesale difference first. Yeah. Okay. To do it non sorted there. Right. And then just and then just put the name and, and don't select it. And uh uncheck the yeah, uncheck and it. ascending. These ascending. Yes. Uncheck. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I I just don't see how this is going to help. One cent, one cent, that's it. Go to the very... Do an ascending, do an ascending sort, John, on yeah. the sale. Oh. Holy cow. The gold. Ooh, ooh. I'm impressed. She's losing money on her, but it didn't sort the names. No, it sorts the uh, sale first. Sorted the sale mm -hmm. first before the names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we need Emily Randolph bought jewelry. Yeah, she's in there a lot. And she got a big discount on handmade toaster. Handmade toaster. <laughs> Emily Randolph. I yeah. bet it's her. Well, Let's put in her phone number and see if it works. Okay. 914. Here I go. She moved though. 914 868. O three one six. That was it. Wow. That worked. It was Emily Randolph. Huh. I'm I'm amazed at a twenty five hundred uh right. <laughs> <laughs> possibilities. Well, I guess not twenty five hundred, but uh, yeah. 2566. Yeah. But she, but she was in there enough times and she was the one who who made the most money. Like that one was $54. Yeah. That she made on a cellular monitor. Yeah. Let's uh let's do okay. Save that, John, save that query. <clears throat> it, is it possible in access to do things like frequency tables on the name column? Um, I was just going to suggest that, Anya. Cool. That they do a um, do a just do a query off the query, and do a count. Do the names and account. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. okay now, the same way, the same way you did it before, John. Where you were creating a query off the query? Yes. Yes. Well, if you if you just went in there and filtered on the one name. No, this is assuming you don't know what you're looking for. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Six. You want six? And you, you want, want name. Six. Uh, you picked five. five. You hit five. You want six. Oh. oh. Okay. Now, what I would do here is just do name. Yeah. And then, and uh, then no, and then the next column, put in name, and you're going to do a count on the name. 
Yeah. Okay. And uh, totals. And then this is a count. Okay. Let's try that. Uh, yeah, you could even sort it before you run the query. Okay. Oh, sort it. Oh. Sort it by count. Sort it by count. Ah, uh, yeah. That, you're right. That's that's better. No, descending, right? Descending. Descending. Emily Randolph. Yeah. Guess who jumps mm -hmm. to the top of the list? Yeah. Was that what you found, John? Was it, yeah. Like, if you put no. a phone number in, I can, I'm pretty sure Emily Randolph was the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you do it? Did you try? Yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we got number. 36. We got number six. We're on number seven now. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to save this. Oh, six, eight. Are you finding this interesting, Anya? Uh, ex exceedingly. I am I very delighted. You're going to have to take some good notes for Saul. Well, we're recording it, and I'll I'll make sure that you have the uh, video. Yeah, that'd be great. There are some things. I mean, a lot of us are learning little tricks, and John is pretty fast and facile with working with Excel, with access, excuse me. And so it goes pretty fast, but you go back and you go, oh, I can do that and I can do that. And then you practice a little bit and it's a database. And yeah. it's a great database to learn on. And this is a great database to work with, Noah's database. Oh, uh, so number seven. Number seven, I'll read it to you. Oh, that tapestry with the colorful toucan on it. I'll tell you what happened to it. One day I was at Noah's Market and I was just about to leave when someone behind me said, Miss, you dropped something. Well, I turned around and sure enough, this cute guy was holding something I had bought, he said, I got almost exactly the same thing. We laughed about it and wound up swapping items because he had wanted the color I got. We had a moment when our eyes met and my heart stopped for a second. <laughs> I asked him to get some food with me and we spent the rest of the day together. Before long, I moved into his place. It didn't last long, though, as I soon discovered this man was not the gentleman I thought he was. I moved out only a few months later, late at night and in quite a hurry. I realized the next day that I'd left that tapestry hanging on his wall. But the tapestry had come to represent our relationship, and I wanted nothing more to do with it with him, so I let it go. For all I know, he still has it. Can you figure out her ex-boyfriend's phone number? <laughs> so here's a day when the orders were basically the same between two people. Hmm. I got almost exactly the same thing. I don't even know if you need names yet. I don't know. Just I'm just throwing it in here. Going by the orders first. Anybody got some suggestions? Order ID is SKU quantity. Order ID SKU quantity. 
same date. You need the product, it's a tapestry and the description of products, description of product was called some kind of tapestry? Yeah, that's the clue in the whole thing, this, this rug. Rug. Is the thing the that goes through. All right, why don't, why don't we, why don't we try that? And, uh, yeah, why don't you build it? Why don't you just build it a little, you know, one field at a time? Go over, change that into, again, a snapshot rather than a dynaset, and get rid of everything except the description. Okay. And now you can, now you can play with, uh, the criteria, you know, equals ta tapestry or something. No, the tapestry is not the product. The tapestry is is the carpet that got passed around from person to person to person. So I thought, no, it is a it is a tapestry. Yeah, it's a tapestry. That's what the that's what the question was. It said something about a tapestry. No. All of the questions, the whole puzzle. Yeah, you're right. It is a rug, but it's a it really is. fancy rug. Okay, John, John B. Yes. This is where this is where not for an end user, but for going through data like this, this is a great spot to use a parameter query. So right there on your criteria line. Oh uh, yes. Put in there like and then in quotes, quote star quote. Once, wait a minute. Like Four, space, like star, space. Like space. And you, you know, and you double quote. No, no, no. It's you're just enclosing a single, enclosing the star within double quotes. Just that. And and close your quote. Now yes. in ampersand. And. And left left square bracket. Okay. And then, you know, uh, looking, just type in looking for. Okay. Right square bracket. Right. Ampersand. Double quote, star, double quote. Is this okay? Okay, now right. run that, now just run that. Yeah. I have no idea what that does. Uh, it you brings up a parameter. It. Right, now just put in there rug. We're not looking for a rug. Well, let's try it. Ah. Uh, okay, you have rug 11 cleaner, rug cleaner. It's rug cleaner. Okay. Now up on, your, up on your toolbar there, just click on your view. Uh, All the way top left under your file oh, yeah. menu. Okay. Just go to view and then click the run again. Right next with the red asterisk. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. And look for tapestry. We're not looking for a rug or a tapestry. That's not a product. That is the for? that is the thread yeah, of the all the puzzles. If you go back to puzzle number one, you'll see that they started by trying to find the tapestry or rug that belonged to somebody a long time ago, and it kept getting passed to new people. It's not a product that per was purchased in the store. And here we need to look for some orders by people who were made on the same day and had the same quantities or the same SKUs. That's the clue in this thing. Mm. And the two quantity people, is one. Two people ordering the same stuff on the same day at the same time. In the same quantity, which is one. No, it's got nothing to do with just buying one. They could be buying five apples. Each of them was buying five apples. The only clue we have was 
that one of them bought something in one color and somebody else bought the same thing in a different color. Wow. But it's on the same date? Same date and time. <laughs> okay. Or at least the so, same date and hour. Anybody else feel like cheating? Yeah, let's cheat. I cheated for this one. Okay, let's go. Here's five. And his, oh, I'm going the wrong way. What happened there? Five. Is this six or is this seven? Seven. seven. Okay. Bought something not longer after our previous person. Identical except in color. They talked, probably followed each other. The exact next order and a guy. Mm. So we need to look back at the previous one and get the date. Uh, but Emily, whatchamacallit, bought 26 things. So we don't know. Does he get the answer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, I'm not sure how we would do this. Does you kind of this says, let me see. The, they probably follow each other the exact next order. So, so the order number has to so be, it's be the order one number more than the other. All the order numbers increment by one. Right. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the same date and within the same hour. We could guess that it's within the same hour, or if you can manipulate the minutes within, you know, 60 minutes or 15 minutes either way. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to be comparing between two records. Well, that's because your date and time were put in as text. Right. Well, you can separate that out. What did he do? If you scroll down, we haven't finished cheating. But it's, but it's the order number, though. They're they're. Yeah. Oh. It's the product SKU and the order info, the order ID and the product SQ. Those two things have to match. And he's joining customer C with customer O. Yeah, but you're, you're comparing two records. I don't know how you're going to do that. Next orders. They got a view, and then from orders O, join customers on O order. Or I need to see more of the screen, more of the code. What does he do further down? What answer did he get? Scroll further down, John. That's it. That's it. You want the result? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't tell you the name, but there's 29 rows. This finds all the people who ordered right after our previous person in all times. So you find a person, and then you find somebody who ordered right after that person. By right after, it's like within it, there are only 29 rows and fewer objects with colors bought by people whose names are male. The right result is there. Now we're going to do that in the query. You're going to use the times of the orders. 
you know, you, you compare the, the, the current order with the previous order. Yeah, how are we going to do that? It's independent of time. How do, you, how do you do that, Henry? The orders increment by one. Yes. Any order so ID. You know the current, the current order, then you know what the previous order number is. It's one less. The order number is one less than the current order number. So you go through and you take every order and you look at its time. And then you look at the next order and you subtract the time. And if it's less than five minutes, that's one thing in your table. And you're going to get all the orders that have those things. And you're going to look at the names. And you're going to look at the objects that they bought. And they're going to have bought the same objects that differ only by color. And the second order was purchased by a male. Want me to repeat that? If you go through all the orders, take an order, you get its time, you look at the next order, you subtract its time. If the time is less than five minutes, those two orders are part of your first query. Now you've got all those orders. Now you look at all those orders and you look at what they bought. And they bought the same thing except for difference in color. Yeah, I have no idea how to do that in a query. So you do the first query and you get the list of all the orders that were purchased within five minutes of one another. I don't That's, see how you do that. Well, you have because the time. It, it's only you have the, at, you have the up, time. It, you're not comparing. You're not comparing between records here. Yes, order ID one and order order ID and order ID plus one, because all the order IDs increment by one. Well, I know that. So you take an order ID. And then you get that one and you get its time. And then you get the next order ID. Then you get another column that has the next order ID, which is the first order ID plus one, and you get its time. Now you got two times. Subtract them. If they're less than five minutes, then they constitute a data set that you're going to look at. If you do that query, you will end up with a certain number of orders. No, well, what you do is you compare, what you do is you compare order X with order X plus one, and you compare the SKU of both of those orders. If they're the same SKU, then they bought the same product. Well, that makes sense, but how do you compare two different records in a query? You you have two you have your query I mean, one column. I could see you have for order 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 one, right? Then the next column you have an expression for the following order. Which is you have order an expression. ID plus one. Let, let's say next order. Right? I have an expression called next order. And you have the expression is whatever the order ID is plus one. Plus one. So now you have okay. you have that as a key. Okay, I can see that. Right? Okay. You have that second column as the I as a key lookup for okay. the rest of the information for that second order. Okay, let's, let's just get rid of it. Let's it. Okay, so we're gonna do order ID. Right. And then we're gonna do an expression, which is next order. Right. And it's going to be order ID plus one. Right. Uh, that's all. Well, it doesn't matter. Plus one. Okay. Okay, I can see that. Okay. Now you have, 
no, you have name for order ID, and then you can find the name for the next order ID where you have criteria for order mm -hmm. ID equals next order. Say that again. Uh, you want the name here? Is that what you want? Well, well no, what you want not, name not, for, for the first order ID, right? And then you want the name for the next order ID. Okay. And let's put, no. You can put an expression for next name, okay? Well, we, we don't uh, really care about the names. What we want is the times of the orders. Isn't that of the ordered field? There's a field called order. Would that be the time? Or is that a yes, no? Say ordered and shipped. This is this is somebody who's in the store picking this stuff up. So we can use either of those because they should be the same. So if you use shipped, that's that's the time when they checked out of the store, right? So yeah. you need to use the shipped of order ID and the shipped of order ID plus one. And you're going to compare those two, those two times. Well, I, I certainly am having trouble following this logic. I, though, I mean, the logic is okay, but how are we going to write that here? Well, just put the time, put the shipped of order ID. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll put it here. No. Okay. Well, that's for the first one. And then you want the shipped of order ID plus one, shipped of next order. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, Are you going to be able to subtract those two? I'm just thinking if we do a I don't know if that's going to work. It, it's got to be it's got to be an expression. Mm -hmm. And next ship is uh, I, I no. But you have the next order ID right there, right? Well, it's the next order ID is now next order. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. it's next order dot shipped. Is that the way you say it? I would just say next. I don't think so. No, I've given you an order ID in the next order column, haven't I? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's do this. Um, where order ID equals next order. Next order, right. You think so? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, let's just. Let's do. Now, now the thing is, this is going to give you a huge table because you haven't done anything to limit it. The thing yeah. that limits it is you take next shipped and subtract shipped, and it's got to be less than 10 minutes. Oh. Okay. 
Well, the problem here, I guess it's here because order ID, it it doesn't is it is exists in two tables. So we have to refer to the which table. I guess Noah's orders. What do you think? Yeah. Is uh yeah, I'm not sure what the brackets would be. Well, you're just gonna you put the table off. name in the next next row. Yeah. Start off with the left bracket, put in the table name, right bracket, dot. Uh, now is finish. Yeah. Where yeah, do you, put you a, want a dot? Left, left bracket before Noah's. Yes. And then a right bracket after the S in orders. And a dot? Dot. dot. Left dot? bracket, order ID. Okay. And right bracket after ID. Yeah. Okay. Let's try that. Like I said, well, you're going to get a huge number. It's going to be twice as big. You need, you need to, to do the subtraction to limit it. I don't know. It's not happy. I think it might be because of the text in your next shipped column there. Right. Yeah, because you have to do the same thing in this column that you did for next order. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, you sounded all happy with me. I, I, I can't type anything in because it just keeps me giving me the warning. You mean hey. you can't go into the next column to type something? No, yep. no. Hit your, hit your delete key to get rid of the dot in there. The dot here? Yeah, that should let you start typing something. Valid syntax. Okay. All right. But we could go over here. Is, Andy, you want me to do something here? Should this yeah, be in brackets? Yeah, you got to do the same thing. You got to put the left bracket, Noah's dash orders. This son of a... All right. This, this is just not working. Let, let's. Uh... But we've used up all of our time also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anybody who can figure this one out gets a gold star and can share it with us next time, because now we've got a complicated query. Yeah. You know, I wonder, we could make a query with all the even number order numbers and a second query with all the odd number queries, uh, numbers, <laughs> and link them together and... Well, they wouldn't link. No. no. no th th this works. It works this way. The thing is that when you do it like this, you double the number of rows that you found. Yeah, that because, makes sense. Yeah. And you don't want that. You need to do something that limits it. And the only way to limit it is to say, I only want to see the ones in which the ship times are five minutes or less apart or 10 minutes or less apart. That will limit it to a much, much smaller number of such orders. Yeah, yeah. Well. Or that they have the same SKU in the orders. Yeah, that's true. Well, I... Uh... The SKU will be the same if the color is different. <laughs> Probably not. John, they gave they, they gave you the answer on, on that web page you had, right? That was the. You answer. want to know what the answer was? As, as well <laughs> you could you could type you could copy and paste that into S, SQL and then convert that to the query grid and it'll solve it for you 
if you copied all of this, go to SQL, paste it in. I mean, that's not what you want to do, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, you could help us and try it during the week, Sandy, or the month. <laughs> um, I, I don't have this information. Can, can you... How many? How many people get these things? Do you, does anybody report it to you, Anya? Some some people do. Some people send us emails to blog posts like this one. Um, we also, yeah. So it's mostly when someone writes it online or reply or sends us an email. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I th I found this one hard. Um, it's in it's inner joints, which I'm not really comfortable with. Yeah, that, that's, you see, that's, that's the thing, doing the join of the two orders. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's doing. He joins orders and, and then he joins SKUs from the orders. But if the time was put in there, like you put the time in as text, John Berrien, and uh, you, can, you can have it be a uh, date and time Access has a date and time format. Yeah, I, I know how to do that. So suppose you create a duplicate query of your of your uh, order, your Noah's orders, or 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 or, 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 or no orders items. You you have another duplicate of that. So you have two queries that, that that's the same as those orders underscore items. Right, those orders underscore items and those orders underscore items too. Yeah. And then you compare those two queries together. Well, John All right? was saying he thought that he was, it had to be within five minutes or so. It's not, not very if you if you send, uh, I, I, send, send me the address to that web page where the answers are I'll, yes I'll, I'll try to work it backwards and see what i can do okay can you do okay. that this, this is uh when you get a chance just just send it to me as an email yeah no, oh okay, that's so no problem i'll look at it because i'm coming in at the end here with this stuff and i didn't see the original questions anyway so, yeah uh, this... i'll just take that SQL and, and see if I can convert it to queries. Okay. Since um, John Stanfell has given me the challenge. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I never did anything where you had to compare different records. Well, so it this is like, a good new thing for us to, to try. Yeah, I, I could see maybe doing it with VBA. Uh, but even that would be something new for me. So we'll have to see. In the meantime, I don't think this is going to save. Let me see, see if it'll save. Yeah. Uh, seven. <laughs> I don't think that's saved. Let, let me just get rid of this. All right, stop that. Thank you, John. Okay. That's why we do this. We learn something new every time. And it takes having a something interesting like this to challenge the whole thing. Yeah. I officially throw in the towel. I'll, I'll, I'll send the uh, answer to uh, anybody else want the answer? I can just, I think I can post it. It's not really the answer. What, how did you send it out last time, John? Well, I can send you, the, right, I can send you the, uh, the uh, database, but do you do you want this too? That's what I was thinking. I, I, I would make the yeah, send, send out the link to the uh, yeah. answers. Plus this uh, answer. Yeah. 
Is uh, that was a humdinger. This is a, you're working on question seven, right? Yeah, okay. it's all in one file. It's all you know, it's all in one thing. You you don't have to solve any puzzles to read these. Mongehong.com. I'll look at it. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll stop sharing. I'd like to know how to do the comparison between two records for the time. That yeah. if we just use this as our challenge for next week, even beyond this puzzle, that would be a useful thing to be able to do. Yeah. Compare two times. Anya, do you, how did you solve this? This one, I think the honest answer is I didn't solve that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I cheated for that one. Well, uh, well <laughs> but that, I, but, that's even so that's better than we're doing. Yeah, yeah. No, for, for that one, it's a combination of time deltas and keeping keeping track of um I think using the address for the person that we got from the previous puzzle um to get her to filter for her and then finding who had an order close to her i think that was i think that was the trick if i remember correctly oh. but I, I didn't figure that out on my own i i fiddled with time deltas and joins yeah yeah but being able to do the time deltas would be a useful thing to for us to be able to do in yeah. access yeah as well yeah now and so you didn't use the SKUs and matching orders. I I did try that once, but that didn't work. That didn't I didn't I didn't man I got too many rows. Every, every time I tried something related to descriptions or SKUs, I got too many. Um, it got me too many results. It wasn't um, narrow enough. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you, what did you very use, interesting. You used visit data primarily. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, I can link here. Uh, how do I open chat? Okay. I looked um, at busy data once or twice, and it just yeah? blew me away. Yeah. yeah. It just blew me away. When you can <laughs> open up a text file with a couple million records in it inside of a second or two. Yeah. Wow. Mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. For mm. for me, it was just oh, that no matter what the format was, when I was at my job, it was just it worked on SQLite, it worked on HDF five, and it was just and it all looked the same. It was so cool. Yeah. The speed is the speed is what is impressive, with very little overhead. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Um, and thank you everyone for letting me like peer at this. <laughs> Oh, no, not at all. If you like, if you like, tell your friends. Pardon? Tell your friends. We're a friendly crew. Yeah. <laughs> you see some people struggling with these things using little tips and. Uh, Anya, a question. Did you find us on meetup.com? No. Um, no. Um, AJ uh, told me about this group, oh. uh, AJ Kerrigan. Because I think his father is part of this group. That's um, me. That's, Andy. that's you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. AJ is like my honorary Canadian friend. Um, but yeah. He thought that Saul was going to jump on too tonight, but. Yeah, I, I think I think Saul had trouble connecting. Oh. Yeah. And AJ AJ was doing the. I think uh, dance class tonight with my granddaughter. Oh, was he? This yeah, is interesting. Yeah. 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 I just passed it along and yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That's how the whole thing started. Very good. Yeah. To me in December. 
Yeah, Andy, that's right, Andy. You started the whole thing. Uh -huh. AJ, my son passed it along to me as a, hey, thought you might, this might interest you. And when I saw the, when I looked at the data, I saw tens of thousands of rows of data. I thought, wow, that's custom made for a, a database workshop because we're always looking for real data, you know, live data to work with rather than creating a table and, okay, you have three or four records where you can't really see the power of the queries. And then when uh, between San, uh, some of Sandy's workshops with uh, show and tell on designing forms and uh, some of the reports and uh, John, some of the stuff that you've done with data normalization and the yeah. relationship, the rest of it, it just seemed, it seemed pretty cool. And then it was just, you know, some back and forth. And I think Saul, AJ passed it to Saul, and Saul actually saw something online about Brookdale. So that initiated some conversation. This has been going on for a couple of months now. And it's fun. Yeah. And, and Fred, uh, Fred Cagle shot me a, a question. What was AJ's connection? As far as I know, his only connection was he was one of the beta testers on this. Um, yeah, we're, we've been online friends, I, I feel, for at least a few years now, which is why he was on, which is how he became on the beta. I've only met him in person once. Yeah. Okay. I see him a little bit more often. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> this distance is shorter. It was great yeah. to have you join us, Anya. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, yeah. it was a, it was a privilege. Way, you're welcome back anytime. Thank yes. you. You're I'm now going to go anytime. see. Um, and if, no, if at you... Some point, at some point, if you wouldn't mind, Anya, mm -hmm. think about maybe doing a show and tell on visit data. Okay. Uh, on, a good, on a good day, I can spell visit data. That's okay. as far as it goes. <laughs> but... To, to see, just seeing some of the things that could be done, it, it's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. It's we'll probably blowing. take you up on that. Like a little, you, you show me access, which I never knew about and genuinely looks really cool. And like the combination of accessibility and query building and everything being visible. Um, oh yeah, I'd love to. If you already oh, have, yeah. if you already have Microsoft uh, Office 365, mm -hmm. you may already have access. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cost you anything to play with it. Mm -hmm. Are you mainly on Windows or on a Mac or a Linux I'm, or what? I'm mainly on Linux, but my partner does yeah. have a Windows that I can play with. Right. That's that's probably why you're doing a hell of a lot more with Visit Data yeah. than with Microsoft products. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because Visit that you can get Visit Data to work apparently on Windows, but its strength is on Linux. Yeah, that's and true. It, it, it's mind blowing, mind blowing to see it. So, uh, yeah, I'd oh. love to say, like I said, you're welcome anytime. You can go through yeah. John. I'm sure he can make arrangements to to pencil you in. Not for a a two hour. This is just before we go to bed type. But you know, even a half an hour, an hour uh, show and tell on what you can do with visit data. That'd be great. Yeah. Next uh, uh, thir what Thursday the twenty seventh. We're going to have a one hour presentation during our general meeting about podcasts. So if you were thinking about the possibility of doing a video like a podcast about Visidata, you're gonna you could join at that meeting. It's free and open to the public, just mm -hmm. like this. Let me know and Andy can send you or I can send you the link and you get somebody introducing you to creating the video like a podcast. What what's your what's the email that I contact? Is it Andy, um, do you wanna you can you you know what you already have AJ set up. Yeah. You can go through AJ and he can get okay. you know, send me anything or get anything he wants from me. Okay. Okay. Um Sounds and good. oh by the way. Uh, John S. is our president. You can still join as at no cost. So, B. Sug WS leader is John S. Yes, John S. is 
Yeah. It says workshop leader, but he's the press. He drives the bus. Okay. BC, John B. You can look at on tonight. bcug.com. Okay. But yeah, there's a, uh, you can join at no cost for mm -hmm. this right upcoming now. year. Yeah, right now. So uh, it's not like you're just going to be lurking in the corner on a, on a Zoom call or something. You could actually be a 100% member. And there are some other workshops, whether it's, uh, you Linux. know, they're talking about a general meeting coming up with the podcast. There's a, a fairly active Linux workshop. Tomorrow. Where, yeah, where people, I mean, there are people on there that have forgotten more about computers than I would ever hope to learn. You know, and most of them speak your language with regex and shell scripts and all the rest of that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. yeah, just keep in touch. I will. And, and yeah, thank you. I'm I'm losing a little bit of presence here, but I'm I'm I am very grateful. Well, that's and... because we talk too much. Have a good <laughs> night. Thank you. <laughs> night. Great job. Thank yeah. you very much, guys. Bye. Anya, it was a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, thanks for attending. Have and a good thank night, you, folks. John Berrien. And thanks, yep. Andy, for getting us involved with all of this. And thanks for everybody else. It was great seeing you tonight. Very great. Yeah. And I will post the video of this meeting. Yeah, and you're, you're going to have to help me again with getting signed in as a leader. I think. We'll do that, yes. Yeah. Great. Good night, all. Uh, good night. Good night.